There's like no respect, you fucking sons of bitches, ready? And then we roll, hey guys, so here- I were my besties! <laughs> with my friends! I called you best friend once and you insulted me, so I'm never <laughs> What did gonna, I say, what did I you're say? You're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs>
or the heavyweight side and I'm like, okay, well, we'll just beat in an hour. And then that kind of went from that to him being like, stop being like, you know, stop being a weenie. Like you want these type of results and yeah. you keep doing the exact same thing over and over again. Like, have you seen any of those things? And like, this have is you years ago it? though, yeah, when girls aren't yeah. really lifting. Yeah, at all. Like no one was really lifting. This is like what? Uh, maybe like five, six years ago. Yeah, it was very rare for yeah. a girl to maybe squat or deadlift. Yeah, I mean, even it was it was just rare for people to squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's at a true. commercial gym. Yeah, did we, I think we had two squat racks, always empty. Yeah. All the time. People curling in it, benching in it, yeah. doing pull-ups in it, always empty. So how do you go from being intimidated to a ballet? It's like, I'm gonna open a badass strength and conditioning facility. So that was kind of like a long journey. After I, uh, I started training at Bally's, then I realized that all the people that were in jail didn't really have the best information. <laughs> so I started <laughs> buying all kinds of magazines and I would start reading those. And then from then on I joined the Marine Corps and I just realized that the barbells and, and training in a gym, it can, you can use it to propel you in any type of fitness endeavor, whether you want to be a bodybuilder, get big or athletic or, or powerlifting or just strength based. And then as I started uh, reading more, I realized what I really enjoyed was being able to be strong while being explosive and having like quick footwork. So uh, because of that, my, I kind of tailor, uh, I custom tailor my own training to stay under like five reps for most of my lifts. And then in between, I would superset with like crazy jump rope drills. So I pretty much invented like my own personal version of like CrossFit athletic for myself. So yeah. you see like my, my old school videos, I'll hit like, I'll be weighing like 170 and I'll smash 295 on the bench for like two or three reps. And then I'm like going crazy on double unders <laughs> in the middle. And I'll go back, you know, and I'll like, I'll put like three plates on bent over rows and I try to cheat row like two or three of them. And I go back to doing some other crazy <laughs> shit. And then, so that was kind of like my style of training because that, that worked for me when I did either Muay Thai MMA or like the way that I like to play basketball. Like I like to drive really hard. And so that kind of worked for me. And um, after a while, um, when I got hurt doing MMA and stuff, I was like, oh, I really want to compete. I enjoy the aspect of competing. And I, I, I was like, with all the strength that I developed, I wonder how strong I am compared to other people. So I just Googled um, lifting competitions and I didn't know what powerlifting was, I didn't know what weightlifting was, I didn't know what Olympic weightlifting was, or any of that, any of that. even CrossFit, I didn't know what anything was. And then this, uh, I saw that a powerlifting competition was coming up in about, I think, uh, like two months. So I was like, fuck it, it's a squat, bench, and deadlift. I bench right now, I deadlift right now, I could probably learn the squat. And uh, I signed up for it, and I think I only had, uh, by that time, I think I only had a month and a half to train for it. Powerlifting's already, uh, or still is, excuse me, pretty niche, and it's grown a ridiculous amount over the yes. last like four years. How has it just shown up at that place? I mean, even think prior to the meet, just him like being super excited, saying that he found this place, or he found this competition where he can like, you know, compete against other people. He was super stoked, but knew nothing about it. So I remember him watching video after video after video. YouTube? Uh, yeah, on YouTube, like trying to figure out how to do the correct lifts, what the order is. Uh, and then uh, him cutting for his first meet. Like he did it like wrestler style. So yeah, he yeah. put like the plastic bags over his body, did a crazy water cut, ran I don't know how many miles a day before, Damn. which is like now that yeah. powerlifting, like we're more knowledgeable in it. Like we know that's like the worst thing you can do for yourself. Um, and then, so he's like completely dehydrated, completely <laughs> depleted, like looks super sucked in. We show up day of the meet. Ripped, though. There's probably like, <laughs> Uh, it's at Camp Pendleton in San Diego, and we show up and there's probably like 40 competitors. All of them are white, maybe one other Asian person. And these people are like white people that like I've never seen in LA. They look like they're coming from like... The Midwest. Yeah, like Midwest. Harley driving, yeah, boots yeah. wearing. Yeah, and I was like, dude, like we're gonna hear some racist shit today. Like, <laughs> fuck it, like I'm prepared. Like, this is what he wants to do. I'm like, I'm gonna be a good girlfriend. I'm gonna support my man. But I didn't know what the hell to expect. It was like... Such an odd thing to be be at. I pretty much prepared the way that I knew how. So since I wrestled in high school, I knew how to cut that way, which is the trash bags, you run and stuff. Yeah. And so I just applied that to me cutting for powerlifting. And I even remember um, me getting warmed up because Camp Pendleton was in January, it was kind of cold. And uh, I just warmed up the way that I knew how before, like the squats. So everyone's like, you know, like doing leg swings or with banded stretches. I'm like, I'm just gonna do 25 burpees. <laughs> I'm doing burpees at the side and I could just see everyone staring at me like, what is this motherfucker <laughs> doing? But I just did what I knew and then yeah. I, I just wanted to try my best. Did that experience end up being good or bad? It was the, one of the best experiences of my life. So 
even though I didn't know anything, like this is how bad my knowledge of it was. I was squatting to warm up um, for my first attempt and this guy comes up to me and he goes, um, are you gonna squat that deep for the meet? I'm like, yeah, this is how I usually squat. He goes, just to let you know, none of these will fly. Cause I was squatting above parallel. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, you have to go until your hip is below your knee joint. And I'm like, what? I thought if my thigh is like parallel to the floor, that's parallel. And he goes, no, you're, you're like way above parallel right now. So I'm like, oh shit. So I learned how to squat to death the day before the <laughs> meet. And uh, there's this guy named Matt Reap, shout out to him. Um, he was competing against me, he was 165er, but he could just tell how new I was and he was helping me the whole time. That's cool, he was like pretty strong experience. Very strong, I think at that time, he was a, a top 10 ranked 165er. Cool. In 2013, I think he pulled 550, benched 410, and it was like, those were huge numbers yeah. back then. And still strong. he looked like he was 60 something years old. Yeah, That's not what a young was guy. Crazy. He was just white though, but he was like, oh. he was like late 30s. <laughs> he was? Yes. <laughs> He was also a sergeant in the Marine Corps, and he, he was just late He's 30s. been through it. Yeah, he was late thirties. Probably been deployed a couple times. <gasps> Dude, uh, having that. Like, was not 60. I have to have That's really bad. That's fucked up. <laughs> he was not sixty whatsoever. Did uh, having that uh, Marine oh, background shit. help at all? Like I know, like in our gym, we have some military or Air Force or whatever come in, and they bond pretty quick because they've been through similar things. Do you think that helped you bond with that guy at the meet a little bit? I think so. So I was a former Marine, and then he was a Marine, and so we clicked on that immediately. And I can tell he was just really trying to help me. Like immediately, he took me under his wing. That's cool. And then he was uh, telling me, it was like, uh, he was warning me about the pause on the bench. You know, a lot of people in the first meet, they, they just freak out and they just start benching out of nowhere. So he was just helping me the whole time. And I think because of how welcoming he was and the environment he was able to create for me, I just really, really felt in love with power, powerlifting. And it was after that meet where me and Gio, I was like, hey, we gotta get into powerlifting. This is an awesome sport. We started looking all around in LA for a powerlifting gym and there were none. And uh, so we decided to open one. So it was from that one competition you decided like, shit, we need a place for other powerlifters and strength guys that can train. Yeah, so after that meet, I uh, started looking up all kinds of programs. Yeah. Like, you know, conjugate, small, life shake, all that stuff. And none of the gyms in our area have like a deadlift bar, have chains, bands, or anything like that. No. And um, so I asked her, I'm like, hey, can we just put a squat rack in our living room? And she was like, no, our living room's a living room. And I'm like, all right. So I, was, I wanted to get like a container and just park it in the back of JK. And then she said she was cool with that. Joe said he was cool with that. And immediately like 20 people, they were like, let's chip in. We'll just get keys and a padlock and we can all work out, out of there. And I'm like, damn, we can get 20 people overnight. I wonder if we can get 100 people to open a gym. Yeah, and so that was kind of the goal. Get a, a certain amount of people, uh, and then you had a little more confidence. Like your network's already big. You guys both grew up here. Obviously you had some uh, popularity and fame from the other um, ventures you do in YouTube. Did you feel it would be uh, low risk in terms of like the actual business part? I, I think we both viewed it very low risk. Go. Did you eat something sour? <laughs> no, I was gonna say something, but every right, time go, I, go no, no, go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> Go, you're already in the middle of the thought. All right, so um, I think in the beginning, we thought it was low risk because uh, we're like, oh, we have a lot of fans and in two weeks, we sold out all our memberships. But it wasn't until two months later when 80% of those guys dropped out. Yeah. Because um, just because they're your fans, they support you in the beginning, but because not all of them are actual fanatic lifters, once they join, they're like, oh, this isn't really for us. Yeah. yeah. What do you think makes Barbell uh, what it is? And what do you think makes Barbell uh, Brigade unique? I think for me, what makes Barbell unique and what it is is one, obviously, it's ultimately the staff. You know, the staff's really welcoming, very knowledgeable, super sweet. Like, um, they really understand the aspect of family values. So they bring that and they bring it into the gym. And that was something that when we were uh, conceptualizing the gym, that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, one of the things that he brought to my attention that he also wanted to make part of the gym that I thought was so amazing was the whole martial art like dojo aspect of things of hey we this is all our like our sanctuary like this is our home we take care of our home whether that is you know disciplining one of our members like politely and saying like not barbell members but like in the dojo disciplining someone and saying like hey we got to respect this to hey now it's all time to clean together so that was something that I thought was really dope because it really gives ownership to you know the person like it's not just a place that we come and we throw weights and then we just bounce and there's no attachment to it it's more like
cool, this is my home away from home, this is somewhere where all my friends kick it at. And it's kind of like a bar, you know, like you go, you, you let loose, you socialize, you have a good time. So that's kind of what I feel like really sets it apart. Yeah, one huge difference that I, I've seen between commercial gyms and a lot of the MMA places that I trained at was that commercial gyms, like, they, they have this sense of entitlement where because they pay for membership, if I use weights, I'm just gonna throw it here. Someone's gonna come pick it up and clean it up versus, um, and then you're paying like $30 a month at the time. But when I trained at an MMA gym, we're paying like $100, $150 a month. And after we beat each other up and we're bleeding on the floor, the same students are the ones going to grab mops and stuff and we're cleaning, wiping down the mirrors. So there was this, uh, it was a completely different perspective. We treated the place we trained like a church or a temple and then this is our place of worship. So we should treat it with the most respect, you know? And then I'm like, damn, this is such a huge difference. How come this one, you pay so little, but you feel so entitled and you kind of trash the place. And then there's this other place you play, I mean, you pay a premium dollar and then you treat it with so much respect. So um, I wanted to make sure that our place, we treated it as if it was a place of worship too. Uh, again, from the outside, uh, something that I think Barbo Brigade has done is built that uh, culture and branding away from the gym. Obviously, when you step into Barbo, it has a, a vibe like that, and you 100% get it. I think similar reasons, the staff, uh, and that always trickles down, obviously, from you guys, and you get that inviting factor. You also get that it's serious. You get that it's uh, um, not it's serious, but not too serious. Uh, it's obviously you're having fun, but it's a place to train. It's a place to kind of worship. It's like your temple, even though uh, of course people are laughing and having fun. Um, but that cool it's a fun church. Yeah, fun church. <laughs> Was it the goal to be in the beginning, or did it just turn out that you guys radiated that throughout everywhere? Yeah, no, it definitely was something that we thought about since the very beginning, because that's just kind of how we are, and that's kind of where the motto came from, Dominate Humbly. It's like, regardless of what you do on a daily, it's like you want to smash and you want to do, you know, above your average every single day, um, but you always want to be humble, humble about it. You always want to make sure that every time you're learning, you're also teaching those that don't know. Um, and you're always trying to be better than yourself. So since the very beginning, we always wanted that to be in everything that we did for Barbell. What's next for you two as lifters? Uh, for me personally, as a lifter, I'm always into just learning different aspects of fitness. So um, right now I'm doing powerlifting, eventually I want to do weightlifting. Pilates. After that I want to, oh yeah, I'm learning Pilates right now, which is really fun. Um, I wouldn't mind getting into yoga, like I want to do bikini. There's there's just so much to do in fitness that I feel like I'm never really going to stop. Um, for me, I'm on a cut right now, and I think it's a lifetime goal for me to hit 1,500, or total 1,500, under 200 pounds uh, body weight with a six pack. And because uh, I entered the game a little bit late, so I realized that and I know that um, I'm reaching probably my genetic potential. But it is a goal of mine to hit 1500 um, with like 12% body fat. I think I'll be really happy with that. And then, like her, I think I want to dabble into a little bit of weightlifting too. Just because, like, you know, just from the start, kind of the everything that even inspired myself to become a powerlifter is training so that I can be a stronger person or a faster person and that just goes back to my roots where I'm doing random burpees and double unders before I even knew what CrossFit was, you know, I'm just like, how can I become a crazier machine and I just want to be a fucking machine, I just want to be able to just like run people down and just tear their head off and um, so I think that brought me to powerlifting but that's always been my roots so I'm just going to figure out how to tear people's head off, heads off in different ways. And then what's next for Barbara again? I think something that's important to me and Geo is I think a lot of people, as soon as they kind of feel this momentum in their business, they want to expand and grow as fast as they can. But um, because like Barbell Brigade is such a baby to us, we don't want to move on to the next steps unless we feel this step is perfect. So for example, um, I, I kind of feel like we're outgrowing our space already and I think a lot of people would immediately start looking for investors to get the next place and just immediately move or maybe even open up three locations at once. But for us, um, we never want to lose track of the family aspect, the dominate humbly aspect. We don't want it to feel too corporate too fast. So we're still trying to lock down everything within our gym, even though there's a lot of other gyms and uh, other athletes that come to our gym and they already feel like Barbell Brigade is perfect. I think we're still constantly trying to perfect that. Like we just became a 24 hour gym and I think for a mom and pop gym that's a huge deal. So once we can get that uh, completely locked down then we do want to get a bigger space and eventually it would be cool to have 
bar uh, barbell brigades in different parts of the country in the next 10 years. And kind of same thing with apparel where right now we have a lot of things in the works and we don't want to premature ejaculate and just, you know, release random designs. We, we want to create a masterpiece and have a really good plan for 2017. And then when we come out, then we start busting nuts all over the place. <laughs> I guess we'll end on that note. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate you not prematurely ejaculating. Uh, you don't know that. If you're in LA, you gotta check out Barber Brigade if you haven't already. Uh, I'm sure many of you have. All the info is gonna be below the gym, these two knuckleheads. Uh, and that's it for us.